Thank you, Lord. We just thank you right now, God. We thank you right now, Lord, because you are in this place. You are in each and every one of us, God. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for resting in our midst, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We praise you. We believe you at your word, God, for your word is truth. Thank you, God, for the testimonies that are going to come forth from your people, God. We believe you. We love you, God. And we thank you, Lord, right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. So good, you guys. <clears throat> Whew. That's good. It's all good. Am I on? Okay. <laughs> you got it? So since I've, I've been up here now, this is my second time to speak, um, but I really feel like since the woman's conference that we had, God's just been pouring out his spirit, and it's not anything different that he's doing, it's just me coming into this reality of, we have his grace. We have his grace to walk and talk and move and breathe and have our being. Um, I was reading something today, and it said this. It said, if we are not preaching the person of Jesus and him alone, we are not preaching the true gospel. If Jesus Christ was not being given central place in the body of Christ, his blessings will not flow as they should. If we don't look at the Bible and see Christ alone, and the grace he provided to us as a result of his death, we are not preaching the gospel of God. I'm just so thankful that we have a pastor that's doing that right here at Abundant Life. He is preaching Jesus and him alone. Amen. He's preaching that Jesus paid the full price for us. In every area of our life, he paid the price. If he is your Lord and Savior, you no longer have to pay a price for anything. 
So I'm going to encourage and share uh, with you tonight is in regards to declaring and decreeing his truth. So I looked up the word declare and decree. So there were several different meanings for declare, one for decree, but anyhow. To declare, it says to make known formally, officially, or explicitly. To make known as a determination. To make clear. To make evident. To make a bid or announcement naming. And decree said a foreordaining will. So in these times when the world seems dark and it doesn't seem like God is on our side, we need to first be reminded that he is. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 13, 5, that he will never leave us or forsake us. What I feel God is wanting his children to do in this day is, dark, is to start declaring and decreeing his truth. His word is the truth. And then we need to stand on that truth. When it's all we can do to stand, just stand. So if you want to pull up, uh, Robert, Isaiah 61 through 2. <laughs> Build it up. Uh, Isaiah 61 and 2. So it says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall rise upon thee, and his glory shall be upon thee. Yes, Lord. So God's got two things he is longing for. For his people to truly understand who they are in him, and then for his people to stand and declare his truth. Nathan's been preaching. We've heard several people up here preaching about who we are in him. We are back in right standing, just like in the garden, before Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit. Because of the... Because of the death of Christ on Calvary, God's children are declared righteous and free. Amen. So in Acts 13.39, I'm going to read out of the Amplified, but all of this is after the death of Christ. So in Acts 13.39, it says, And through him, everyone who believes, who acknowledges Jesus as Lord and Savior and follows him, is justified and declared free of guilt and from all things, from which you could not be justified and freed of guilt through the law of Moses. Romans 3.24. Again, out of the Amplified. This one says, And our being justified, declared free of the guilt of sin, made acceptable to God and granted eternal life as a gift by his precious, undeserved grace, through the redemption, the payment for our sin, which is provided in Christ Jesus. Amen. So how much clearer can God make this for his children? Right. We are set free. We are redeemed. We are made righteous. We are justified and made one with the Lord because of Jesus. Even back in the book of Isaiah 60, 21. This is what he's telling us. Thy people also shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever, the branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. Yeah, yeah. So that who may be glorified? Yeah. So that yeah. God may be glorified. It's all about him. Your righteousness, his grace, his mercy, his favor. You see, it's all given to his children freely so that he may be glorified in all the earth. John 14, 13. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Yes. So that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Mm -hmm. The world, whether they understand and know it or not, is longing for the children of God to take their stance in this time. Yeah. In Isaiah 44, 7. This is out of the Amplified. It says, God says, who is like me? Let him proclaim it and declare it. There is that word, declare. Right. No matter what the world throws at us, God says, stand in my truth. In Isaiah 59, 21, God tells us, don't let the word depart from our mouth. 
Sometimes I ask myself, how can the word depart from my mouth? The word can't depart from my mouth unless I allow it. Amen. How can the word depart if he and I are one? I am one with the word. You are one with the word. Amen. So when facing your mountains, what will you declare and decree? Will you conform to the world or will you choose to not let the word depart from your mouth and speak God's truth over the situation? You see, everything we do, we breathe, we move, we push, we pull, we cry, we shout, jump for joy. God is in it. Mm -hmm. He's with you. He makes up your being if you have him as your Lord and Savior. So where you go, he's there. He wants to lead and guide you into all truth. He wants us to search the scripture and find who we are in him. Mm -hmm. He wants us to know that the promises that were made by him and for him are also ours in this day. Yes. Not for the unbeliever who leans to the world and, is, and its false promises, but for his children. And it tells us this in uh, Galatians 3.16. Galatians 3.16. It declares, now the promises and the covenants were decreed to Abraham and to his seed. God does not say, and to seeds, descendants, heirs, as if referring to many persons, but as to one, and to your seed, who is none other than Christ. So being in Christ, the promises are ours. We are blessed in the city, and we are blessed in the field. We are blessed coming in. We are blessed going out. We are healed by the stripes that Jesus took on the cross. Yes. Our bodies function in perfection. Everything we set our hand to prospers. Yes. We are heir and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. We are delivered and set free by the blood of the Lamb. Yes, Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Mm -hmm. Peace that passes all understanding is ours in the name of Jesus. Amen. And the list of promises go on and on. Just because they may not be active and working in our lives every single day does not mean it's not for us or anything Christ has done. He is done doing everything he is going to do. And now he has left it up to us to carry it out. So we have to stand and declare the promises over our lives, over our children, over our families, over our homes, over our cars, our land, our belongings. All things work together for our good if we believe. We have to stare the false accusations, the false wrongdoing, straight in the face and declare what God says. Do not waver in the faith. Do not waver in knowing who you are in Christ. So we know the devil is no dummy. Sadly, he understands every weakness. Do you know what the devil's name is? His name is not murderer, even though he kills. It is not thief, even though he steals. It is not destroyer either, even though he destroys. His name is Satan. In Hebrew, it means the accuser. Mm -hmm. He is the prosecutor against you. A prosecutor never talks about any of your good points. He is there to prosecute you for every one of your failures. He will bring back every piece of dirty laundry and show you evidence after evidence of your failure. While we are trying to deal with stress and fear, the devil goes straight for the deepest root and uses the law to heap guilt and condemnation on you. He knows that when you are under condemnation, fear, stress, and all kinds of sickness will follow. So he goes straight for the jugular. So what should we do then? We should stand and declare and kill condemnation at its very root and eradicate it from our lives. That means when you hear the voice of the accuser, declare to him that there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ. The word of God also declares that no weapon formed against you will prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you will condemn. You have the authority and the power through Jesus to declare his word and condemn every false word of judgment that comes against you. Back that liar up and put him back in his place, <laughs> which is under your footstool. Amen. So I just want to look at a few examples of how Jesus stood in the face of doubt. He stood in the face of fear, 
death, poor health, and instead of conforming to the world, he declared truth over the situation. So I'm going to read several here, uh, Robert. So Matthew 4.4. 4. So this is when Jesus was in the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And the devil commanded that the stones may be made into bread. When the devil told him to do this, this is how Jesus answered. In Matthew 4.4, 4, it says, But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So that was decreed. It was written. So when the devil took Jesus up, Jesus up into the holy city and said that all these things he would give him if he would just bow down and worship him. This is how Jesus answered in Matthew 4.10. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Amen. So when Jesus declared and decreed what was written, verse 11 tells us what the devil did. So Matthew 4, 11. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Amen. So Jesus stood in the very face of the devil and declared him God's truth and the devil left him in Mark 2 11 this is when a guy came to Jesus sick of the palsy Jesus looked at the situation and responded like this I say unto thee arise and take up thy bed and go thy way into thine house what did the guy do when Jesus declared and decreed him to get up and walk 2 12 and immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. Amen. Every time Jesus commanded and made things happen, it amazed the religious people. But they didn't stop, that didn't stop Jesus from declaring and decreeing. In Mark 5, 8, this was a man with an unclean spirit. Jesus declared and decreed, decreed to the unclean spirit whose name was legion mark 5 8 says for he jesus said unto him come out of the man thou unclean spirit Amen. in mark 5 13 guess what the spirit did and forwith jesus gave them leave and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea they were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. Luke 4.35. This is another scripture regarding an unclean spirit and how it was tormenting a boy. In verse 4.35 it says, And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and hurt him not. Luke 6.10. This is a man with a crippled hand. And looking around about them all, he said unto the man, Stretch forth thy hand. And he did so. And his hand was restored whole as the other. John 11.43. This speaks on Lazarus being raised from the dead after four days. And when thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And in John eleven forty four, we know, and he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, loose him and let him go. So I'm sharing all of these incidents with you because I'm trying to encourage us to see ourselves as God sees us. Jesus did not wring his hands. He didn't sweat and cry when faced with the health issues, death, the very devil himself. He simply declared God's word over the situation and things conformed. You see, things cannot stay or torment or deceive us if we stand against it with God's word. How can it? <laughs> Why do we find it so amazing that Jesus stood girded in God's truth and was able to perform these things I just read, but when it comes to our own situations, we back down or give up halfway through it. 
We have the same spirit living and dwelling in us. We have God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, all things in us. We can do the things Jesus did if we stand, declare, decree, and believe. We cannot go into a situation doubting, fearing, or decreeing something other than what the Word of God says. Mm -hmm. Matthew 21, 21 says, Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not, you shall not only do this, do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if you shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, I heard that from you, Suzanne, up here. And be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. Yes. So Jesus himself said, I only say what my father says. Mm -hmm. John 14, 10. Believest thou not that I am the father and the father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the work. So we have to get it down so deep in us. If when, if and when a bad report comes, we declare to the thing, speaking only what the Father does. We say what Jesus would if he were actually standing there doing it. Mm -hmm. He is the power in us that is doing it anyway. So I just need, I just need to build up the confidence and boldly do what Jesus did. Mm -hmm. I have to know that I am forgiven. I am righteous. I am, able, I am able to do abundantly above all I can ask or think because Christ is in me, the hope of glory. Yes. And I said this once before, our spirits know this and it longs to do the things it was created to do. We are seated in heavenly places in Christ. So I'll end with this. No, that went quick. Sorry. But... <laughs> I encourage you, if you don't already, meditate on scriptures of grace, on scriptures where Jesus...